Hey everyone, it's time for the Cannondale Hooligan build finally. I've had this bike for a little while now and I wanted to do some upgrades to it. So this is a little 20 inch wheel mini velo urban style bike. It does have the Delta V style frame, so similar to some of the old mountain bikes of Cannondale and it does have a lefty fork. It was owned by Wasman, who's a really well known local BMX rider here at one point. So it's got some BMX inspired upgrades, like these fly Reuben tires. And then he's also converted the cranks to BMX style, which uh, McNeil conjoined. Um, it has a profile bottom bracket adapter, so you can use um, 19 mil cranks on it, as well as Odyssey JC pedals and a few other little upgrades. Really cool lefty fork on it. Thompson downhill bars. These have been cut down a little bit too narrow by one of the previous owners. So I'm going to be changing those out. So it's a tree light 33 tooth sprocket. This is a spline drive sprocket. Tree is a BMX company. This is my trailer quick release for my Bob Yak trailer. So a toad on it as well. It's a cool little head badge, which has four M5 bosses on it. So I could probably mount something to that. The Hooligan also has this little Hooligan headset spacer, which is specific to the bike. It came with a 9-speed Sora setup, uh, but we're going to be changing that out because obviously the chainring is not big enough. Uh, it's quite low, so we can't go too fast, but um, I commute with this bike, so it would be cool to have something a bit faster. I did have to get a longer seat post for it because the factory one was cut down. And I'm quite tall, so just I got a factory length one. Unfortunately, the one that Cannondale Expert sent me didn't have the hooligan riding on the back of it, but that's okay. The chain ring I'll be using for it is a Profile Imperial, because it's a chain ring that I've always wanted since back when I used to ride BMX. I didn't have Profile money, and now I still can't afford Profile cranks, but I can afford the chain ring. We're going to be using the box for 8 speed setup so it does come with a little clutch derailleur I bought this used so it was a bit cheaper it saved a bit of money I think it was about third about third of the cost of a new setup I think so this was on a 20 inch bike so I know it's not going to touch the ground there's something that could happen if you do like a, use a long cage rear mech The shifter feels pretty good, the upshifts feel really nice. I don't know how the downshifts will feel though. There's a bit of play in the shifter. So taking off everything now. I really like the JC pedals. I used to ride some of these back in the day and they, they just last forever and they feel really nice under your foot. So those are definitely staying and obviously they match the bike as well. So one of the other upgrades we'll be doing is changing out the handlebar. When I started this video, I didn't know what I was going to be using. Um, I just wanted something a little bit wider and possibly with a little bit more rise just to make the bike fit me a bit better. The bike does feel really long, actually. It makes for a really good commuter. It's not super long wheelbase, but it's long enough to make it feel stable for a 20 inch wheel bike but it's still small enough that it fits in elevators and it gets like up into the apartment a lot easier. So you can see the, the stub axle for the lefty fork and the much larger bearing than what you'd normally see on a front wheel hub. So the bearings feel okay in it, so they're going to be staying, but we just, it pays to check everything as you take it apart. So we'll be cleaning up the stem bolts. Most of the bike was in pretty good condition. I don't know if this is supposed to be a cable guide um, that heads you badge, but when I bought the bike, some of the cables were behind it, so it just keeps them a bit tidier back there. The steel tube has so much chunk to it. I think it's a one and a quarter inch one, um, but luckily the headset was in good condition, so it doesn't need replacing. But it is a steel bearing unit anyway, so not a huge figure. Big chunky fork. It looks like the steer tube was actually cut down as well, but it does have quite a few spaces left in it, so it's still got enough adjustability if I need to. So, busting off the BMX cranks now, I did do this 
um, probably the first month or so that I got the bike just to make sure that they'd come apart because they were quite crusty so I know that they're going to come out I don't have the removal tool for them but like with most BMX things you can just sort of give them a bash and they'll come apart these are three piece cranks so not really a big deal just whack one side and it'll come apart so there you can see the spline drive on the tree light sprocket really cool style but this is just way too small so you can see there for your profile gdh spindle and it's a colony bottom bracket inside profile shell so the cups there will be profile and then the bearings and spaces will be from colony in the, uh, australia pretty cool pretty happy that the bike came apart all nicely it looks so cool stripped down like it's, it looks really small like long and short um, but yeah it looks really cool I really like this bike definitely one of the best things that I've bought like in a really long time so just cleaning it down now before giving it a polish job so the bike's been used and abused but that's perfectly fine with me just shows that it's it's been loved so the previous owner to me was a dad and their, their kids used it and everything because it's quite a versatile frame size so i think that's why the seat post was cut down i don't know if the previous owner cut it down or some before that but not really a big deal um yeah so my partner can fit on the bike but she's a bit shorter than me so the reach is too long for her but because it has quite a low stand hover, quite a large variety of riders can ride it. So we'll be cleaning up the cranks now. This isn't really for looks as so much as longevity of them. Apparently these McNeil conjoined cranks have a bit of a history for cracking. Although apparently they sort of fixed this with the V2 one, so I don't know which version these are. But they've lasted this long, so I might as well try and keep them around for a little bit longer. So I'm just going to be using some rust converter after wire brushing the cranks down just to clean them up from like all the loose scale and stuff. Then on the inside of the cranks I use Penetrol which is basically just like a rust inhibitor. So it just sort of prevents rust from forming and from eating away at the metal. So this is what the rust converter turns the steel or the rusted steel into. Um, it sort of looks like this blackish purple color. After the rust converter on the outside, I just use some primer and then just going to be using some matte black over the top of that. I couldn't find anything to hold this solo crank arm, so I just put an old pedal in there. Works just fine. I don't have a dummy pedal or anything like that, so just a spare one will do. So you can see, well, you might not be able to see here too easily, but the paint is a little bit faded. It's definitely brighter in person than it shows on video, but you can see here some scuff marks and some paint chips and stuff. This is on the non-drive side seat stay. I don't know how the scuff got here, but yeah, we're going to be polishing these up to try and sort of minimize these a bit and restore some of the shine to the bike. Just using this Meguiar's product. Works pretty good for other situations like this, so just giving it a try and see what happens. You can use it with power tools, but I just normally use a rag, polish it on, and then buff it off. It's basically just like a mild um, polishing compound. I wouldn't go as far as using a rubbing compound, just like a mild polish seems to do a pretty good job at removing scuff marks and stuff. I was actually pretty surprised at how well it cleaned up with these marks here. I think mostly just because there was like dirt and stuff embedded in the scratches, so it sort of emphasized them. So after polishing that off, it sort of it masked them a little bit. And I guess it would sort of even out some of the scuffs as well. After polishing the frame, I seal it all with this Meguiar's wax. Um, not sponsored by Meguiar's or anything like that. It's just the stuff that is pretty good quality and seems to be quite well priced locally anyway. By that time, the cranks had dried, so I went over them with matte black. 
I actually ran out of one can and then had to use uh, another one. Just installing the fork now, using a light bit of grease on the headset bearings. This is really just to prevent like oxidization and corrosion of like dissimilar metals and stuff. Not really lubing the bearings, just you know, providing a bit of assembly grease I guess. Just putting the spaces in the same sort of way that they were before because it felt pretty nice. Clean the bolts up. I only had a few bolts to clean so I didn't miss the point and I was too impatient to evaporate them. I think it was just these six. And sort of to match the stem a bit better, um, I decided to paint them black and also because they were quite pitted. <laughs> I didn't have any bolts that were a perfect match in the right grade and tensile strength for the stem, so just reuse them. They're okay to use though. While those were drying, I took the ties off. You can see here they're in pretty bad condition. They're just quite old and skinwall ties just age considerably worse than black rubber ones. But once I took them off, I could see the inside was still pretty good condition. So they still had quite a bit of life left in them, but as you can see from the outside, they looked quite dry. So I guess there's like multiple layers of this. In a couple of spots, you can see here, they were starting to fray. So I started skidding them down, as you can see here by this bald spot. Um, Pace to make the most of ties before you take them off. So I had some fun with them. Servicing the real wheel now. I don't know why I didn't take the rotor off. Um, if you're careful, you don't end up getting grease on them anyway, but you really don't want to contaminate the rotor. So I advise taking it off, but you can get away with it. Just setting everything in a bit of degreaser now. This is just some eco degreaser that the local parts store has. Looks pretty good. You can only just soak them for a few minutes and then it loosens up the grease really well. Bearing cones here are okay. Not like a huge lip or anything in them, and they ran smoothly. Checking out the bearings, you gotta inspect your balls up close. Make sure there's no pitting or anything on the balls, otherwise you just replace them. The surfaces inside the hub looked okay too, which reflects the smooth running of the wheel. It's always good to clean them out and everything, and then put some new grease in. I could actually run like a 12 speed setup on this bike. Uh, because the SRAM cassettes fit, but I don't think a rear derailleur would fit a 20 inch wheel. It would probably scrape the ground. After fitting this one, you can see the rear derailleur comes pretty close to the ground. It's probably uh, about six, oh, I haven't measured it, probably about six, seven centimeters or so from the ground. So it's probably not that too great off road, but we'll see what it's going to be like. All nice and smooth and good to go for another how many years. So this cassette is 11 to 42 tooth, which will give a really nice range on the 20 inch wheel. I really don't need it to be a 42 tooth. Previously it was just 11 to 25 or 28. No, I think it was actually 25 with a 33 tooth cog up front and that was plenty. But the chain ring just wasn't big enough. Pink tires! I think this would look really cool. <laughs> Yeah, some people might disagree with this, but I think this will look really cool with the green. It's just like a crazy BMX sort of colorway. Um, this bike is just so weird. I think I had to have some crazy tires to go with it. So these are the bars that came on the bike. They're cut down to about 620 millimeters. These are some other ones I had. I didn't know which one I was going to use, so I was just sort of eyeing things up. These fun flame-ons had about 10 degrees of back sweep, but they were flat, so they probably wouldn't suit it. I need something with a little bit of rise to it, but the back sweep would have been nice. You can see here that's the flame-on compared to the Thompsons that were on it. So pretty similar. I think the Thompson have about 7 degree back sweep. I did try some Richie Coyote bars, but uh, they didn't fit. I commuted on them, and they were more uncomfortable than the Thompsons that were on it. Go figure, because I really like the Richie Coyotes, but not on this bike. So the ones I'm going to be using, at least until the new bar shows up, are these just random old dirt jump bars. 
Uh, I got these off Nick. <laughs> Thanks heaps for, to Nick for these. Uh, these are going to go on my pump jack bike when I build that up. I've got an old Atom Lab um, trail pump. So that's going to be built up as a single speed pump track bike with a rigid fork and stuff. I've got like a the white industries free wheel for it, so it's going to sound pretty cool as well. Nice and old school, it's got a V brake on it. Yeah, just assembling the bottom bracket now, making sure it's got some grease in it, but not too much. I normally do like a little bit extra here just as I'm screwing it in, just so it has like a nice seal there. It sort of prevents water ingress and stuff. Greasing up the spine so the crank arm doesn't seize on there. I had a bit of an issue with the chain ring. So the bore in the chain ring is 22 millimeters. Um, that's to suit a lot of BMX cranks, but they also provide a shim with it. So that goes down to the 19 millimeters for the other style of BMX cranks. Um, but it didn't measure up right. So this was a little bit too small for the cranks. And also the outside was a little bit too, too big for the inside of the chain ring. So both diameters were completely wrong. So I had to make <laughs> make my own. So it, what's 22 millimeters? Handlebars. Um, so luckily I cut some handlebars down and used that as a bit of a shim. So yeah, pretty disappointed that the shim that came with the chain ring didn't fit. But I'm guessing it's just like a cheaper shim that profile sends out. Because otherwise it should have just banged into the chain ring perfectly. But other than that, I'm just going to rock this shim and see how it goes. Um, it might have a little bit of a wobble, but the derailleur should make up for that, so not really a big deal. Throwing on the wheels now. Oh, the pink and the green. <laughs> I think that looks so cool. So these tyres are Colony Grip Lock tyres. Colony is out of the, I was going to say United States, but they're from Australia. From the cousins of us. Shout out to all the Australians out there. Uh, the brakes we're going to be using, some Avid BB7s. I prefer these over the Shimano cable pulls. Um, they have a little bit more uh, power. Don't know if that works in practicality, but I just like them a little bit more. The thing I really don't like is these clips. So these uh, like pad retaining clips. They're just awkward to get out and they bend and stuff all the time. So the way they work is you put the clip in and then you put the pads in from the bottom. But getting them out once the pads are in there is kind of awkward. So I don't think these have been disassembled for a long time. So we're just going to be cleaning them out and then re-greasing them. So there's just a 11 millimeter on the top there and then just everything pulls apart from there. Pretty simple. They do have three ball bearings on the inside. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Make sure you don't lose them once you pull the caliper apart. I just use a magnet to get some of the washers out and stuff. So just two five millimeter bolts and then the caliper separates. And then one of the pistons will be loose and then the three beams will come out from there. Other than that, pretty simple to do. I think there's a couple of YouTube videos about how to clean them and stuff and whereabouts you want the grease, but pretty simple. So you can see the three bearings there and they just sit on like a bit of a ramped channel. So when the brake lever pulls the arm on the piston, it twists the whole assembly and then as it twists, it pushes outwards because of those bearings on the ramps. Pretty simple design really. They work pretty good. I'm pretty heavy and I've never really had any issues with them. Um, and you don't have to bleed them. So yeah, quite like cable disc brakes. I find it a bit easier to wheelie with them as well. Um, I don't know what that is. I guess they have less power overall, so it takes a little bit more effort to lock them. So you can just sort of feather them a bit more. Uh, I don't really know. It's just one of my theories. <laughs> so taking this out, it needs a T25. So basically it just unscrews and then that cap pops off from there. Amazing that that cap stays on so well. It's got like this little ridge here, but that cap, I've never had one of those pop off. 
yeah, pretty cool. That definitely needs a clean out. It's pretty filthy there from all the brake dust and everything getting in there. So a bit of a clean and degreaser and a scrub. So once the caliper was all back together, I bolted it to the bike. It wasn't until now that I realized that I probably couldn't have gone to a Brigitte disc brake just because of the frame clearance. So you can see here, this caliper on the 160mm adapter, it's pretty tight in the rear triangle as is. Something I didn't notice as well, because I'm sort of up above the bike, is that this rear bolt that attaches the caliper to the adapter I couldn't actually do it all the way down with the wheel in and everything. So I tried to go for it here, but the bolt is pretty well covered by the seat stay. So I had to take the wheel out, loosen up the adapter, and then that shifted it up like over enough so I could tighten it down a bit. Once it was down further, I could fully like snug it up um, with the wheel in and everything. But uh, yeah, it was up too high, so it was too close to the seat stay. So once it was down lower, it was like far down enough that it was out of the way, but something I didn't really think of. <laughs> this nice little design feature here. So because you unbolt the front wheel and then it pulls the disc over and everything as you undo it, obviously if you try to undo it with the caliper on there, it's just going to get stuck in there. So you do have to undo the caliper and shift it out in order to get the front wheel off. But also, you don't actually have to take the front wheel off to replace the front tube. So, not really a big deal if you get a flat tire. But when doing maintenance and stuff, you do have to take the caliper off. But they put these little slots here, so you can just undo it like a few turns. And then the whole caliper will shift out with the adapter and everything on it. Moving back to the pedals now. I really like these Odyssey JC pedals. Just quite a nice classic platform pedal. Pretty sturdy as well. <laughs> Nice feel to them, like the pins aren't too aggressive or anything like that. 
And I didn't want to go too hardcore into it. Tiny one I just wanted to give them a bit of a clean up and a service. On the outboard side, so yeah, just pulling them bigger. apart and cleaning everything on the inside and giving them a bit of scrub on the outside. I did check a couple of the pins and none of them were seized in, but I didn't try all of them. Um, if I had some replacement pin, pins, I probably would have replaced them with some tidier ones. I guess I could have like evaporated them and that, but they're just going to get scuffed up and rusty anyway, so not really a big point. So just clean them up with some degreaser and a bit of a scrub. And of course, as always, when servicing something with these tiny ball bearings in it, I uh, dropped one on the ground. But luckily, I found it. You can't see it here. <laughs> but it's this tiny bearing amongst all this crust and stuff on the floor. Pretty lucky to find that. But it is a pretty standard size, so not really a big deal. Oh, just a bit away. of a nuisance. So luckily, I found that and then got the pedals all back together pretty easily. Something that is a little bit tricky is getting this nut on. I never have a socket that's thin enough to fit like in the pedal properly. So I normally just end up using like a screwdriver or something to to spin it on there. Just not as fast as what it would be with a proper socket. Throwing the grips on. I can't remember what brand these grips are. I think I bought them off Wiggle quite a long time ago. But I quite like the feel of them and just this tie-dye look suits the bike so nicely like pink and bright green and everything so I knew they had to go in the spike chucking the pedals on and then going back to put the cables on I sort of messed up here this cable wasn't actually in the packaging I had it sitting out sort of straightening for a while and I forgot what cable it was I thought it was a linear one but it turns out as you can sort of see here that it's a wound cable so this is like a linear strand cable here, which is sort of compressionless. They're normally more expensive, but I like the feel of them through the lever a bit more. I don't necessarily know if they're stronger, but they can sort of hold up to a firmer pull a bit better. That might be a me issue because I weigh quite a bit, but um, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you prefer coil on cables. Um, or if you've never really noticed the difference, but yeah, it'd be cool to know. So setting up the front brake, just throwing some cable tidies on and stuff. I have these which connect the cables together. I don't normally use them, but on this bike, I just wanted to have like a, a bit of a tidier setup on the front there. I decided to use the levers that came with the bike. They're quite a nice avid speed dial setup and they just have a pretty good feel to them. I was going to use some Odyssey BMX levers, and for those I would have to use Avid BB7 road calipers, but I don't have any spare. I might change them at some point when I find some, but for now we're just using the BB7 mountains with V-brake levers. So you can sort of see there that the, the rotor was rubbing a little bit, had a bit of a bend in it. But some of the times you can sort it out just with a spanner. You can get like a specialized disc truing tool, but it's basically the same sort of thing, just a bit longer. On to setting up the gears now. First we got to size the chain to suit. So straight out of the bat, I give the chain a bit of a clean up. 
they normally come with like this rust preventative coating which is really sticky and disgusting it's not like a regular chain lube so I just soak it in a bit of degreaser then give it a wipe off you can just use like some WD-40 or some of the chain lube that cleans as well as lubricates but I normally just use some uh, yeah WD or degreaser and then use some chain lube once the chain's installed so just wrapping it around the chain ring and the largest cog there then sizing it down to suit because it's a fixed rear end no suspension just add a couple links and call it good it sort of varies a bit given suspension travel and stuff sometimes it's four links or so uh, but yeah two links sized it quite nicely for the derailleur and everything so that's all it needed quite lazy Woola. I quite like using these SRAM trains because they come with a link rather than the Shimano ones that have that pin that they do now which is pretty annoying so just running it through the gears now once it got into the second and then the first it just sounded awful <laughs> I don't know if you can see and hear that um, but I just adjusted one of the limit screws and that sort of quieted it down quite a lot so I think it was just sort of backing off the opposite side of it um, on the, the high side of the cassette and the low gear so the chain ring was a little noisy but it wasn't super obnoxious and bumping trying to jump off so once that red derailleur quieted down a bit, I was pretty happy to run the chain ring as is in this position. It does have like a few spaces on the drive side so I can adjust things if I want to, but it's going to be fine as is. So I wanted to run this caramel bag up front, or potentially a basket, but if I ran the bag then I could make like a little mount to sort of hold the bag, and then if I wanted to I could take it off and put it on as needed. I just needed something big enough to carry my shoes to work just because that's pretty much all I need and then I can rock a backpack for like all my tools and stuff similar to how I did the rear saddlebag support I'm going to be using this stainless rod and then these little u-bolts this is just some aluminium fat flat stock and basically just going to be drilling a few holes and then mounting that rod to it the rod's just going to be bent up by hand in the vise um, into a bit of a, a similar sort of shape as the saddlebag actually the saddlebag support that I made in one of the previous videos pretty simple design um, if you do have some soft drills for your vise use it when you make this but I couldn't find mine so it doesn't really damage the stainless rod too much but it's just something if you're going to want it to look like beautiful and nice then just use some soft drills in your vise the 6mm rod is pretty easy to bend by hand and it's been sturdy enough for me in the saddlebag support so really no issues running it and especially if it's just going to be carrying like some shoes and like a few little bits and bobs and stuff so I wanted to make something that was pretty small just because I didn't want it to be too intrusive but it needed to be big enough to carry that caramel bag so it's about 20 centimeters by 15 and then to mount that I was just going to be using the flat stock sort of sandwiched in between the, the factory power bag out. and then the damn power went out um, sandwiched between the head badge and the mount so similar to this this is just like a bit of a prototype so I thought I would need some support below the u-bolts that's why it's got like that extra bit down there so it looks ugly at the moment, but I can trim off the excess and stuff once I've done some testing with it. I just didn't want it to be too small and then end up like bending that flat stock. And to mount the bag, I just used this voila strap. Uh, voil? I don't know how to say it. But the bag has some D-rings underneath, and that's all it took. Off to test everything now. I'm going to be back at the end of the video to tell you what I think of the bike and... But yeah, immediately I know that the gearing is so much better. The little 33 tooth that was on it before, I could get up to like its top speed so quickly and I was spitting out everywhere. So 
So I want it to be a bit faster, but not necessarily as fast as my 26 inch commuter bikes. Just because this is sort of like a different kettle of fish. But I did get the biggest profile imperial I could find at a 46 tooth. And it worked out perfect. It's similar to a 36 tooth on a 26 inch wheel, if you're familiar. Another thing I really like about this bike is just how it wheelies. It's super fun and super nimble as well as being good to wheelie, but just because I can get a few pedal strokes out of it, it just makes it so much cooler in my opinion. <laughs> it's just so fun to ride. It does pretty good skids too. I found out that these tires wear down pretty quick. So on this rough stuff, I did like a few skids. And um, you can see I, I put a shot in here of just how much wear it went through. I'm glad I only did a few skids now because if this is the damage from one skid, and I'm only going pretty slow as well. This stuff is pretty coarse though, so yeah, something to keep in mind that I won't be doing some super fast skids on this bike. That's better. Oh, and they do pink skids. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell there, but yeah, it does pink skids, which is pretty cool. So just into my right here, there's a velodrome that goes around a sports field. I think they're doing some work to it at the moment now, so it's closed off. I was hoping it would be open, and then we can do like a little lap around. Yeah. 
really nice path through because the road over there and going up through Avondale is a nice cycleway. It gets pretty dangerous. On your right. Thank you. So it's just like a nice off the road path. It's really good. Not normally there's many people walking down it, but it's school holidays at the moment, so. Zip, zip. They don't like this crossing because people don't think that you're going to cross. And it's just sort of cuts. Such a sweet little bike. <laughs> little lean on it. Goes up, it's super slippery. This way towards town, the other way it goes towards that kind of thing. So, this little bit of the path is where I took the hill again on its first ride. Hilligan, can no hands that pretty easily. No hands pedal. I don't know if we can go through that. Oh yeah. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's quite stable for a 20 inch wheel. Like mini velo. It does have a quite a long wheelbase, so that helps it quite a lot. Pretty stable. And uh tow deflect quite a bit too. So. Look at that path goes, up to the field. Something. Nope, wasn't going past the cadence. <laughs> Trying to follow that. Just didn't come up. Oh, weak. Little cut 
through there, but we're not going to try it with this looks. <laughs> If it was there, that'd be fine. But because it has that little bit of play, if you can see that, because it has that little bit of play, it's not quite where I want it when I'm on the outside of the bar. Yeah. Oh, the handlebar, 730 wide. That feels really good. I haven't gone through traffic, obviously, but um, the width, like zooming around, and the handling of the bike feels really good. So I don't think I'd want to go much wider. Hiya. Yeah. But um, a little bit skinny would probably be okay. I think we're going to turn back now. I've got other stuff to do. Such a nice little ride. So that's pretty much it for this video. I think I'll do like a bit of a hooligan update later on. But I have done quite a bit of riding with the bike um, before I did this video. And I'm really liking it. I don't. <laughs> I, there's no downside apart from it doesn't fold, but I don't need it to fold. Um, I could. There would be the benefit that if it folds, I can take it on the buses, because our buses here in Auckland they don't have racks on the front of them, which is bogus. So the bike is so much better now. It really needed that gearing change to suit the riding that I do on it a bit better. So the 46 tooth chainring up front is plenty speed for me. The rack on the front is big and sturdy enough that I can attach that front bag or I can strap a basket to it if I want to, just for a bit more versatility. I will be carrying my backpack on it most of the times though, so yeah, plenty enough, but it just gives me that little bit extra space. Also the handlebars, um, I have changed them now, but they're so much comfier. It just gives that little bit of rise to it. Yeah, overall, really happy with the bike these are the handlebars that i've changed to i didn't get any riding clips of it because they just showed up today actually but these are far st super risers so those are the specs there 12 degrees of back sweep with 50 millimeters of rise i'll leave a link for the bar in the description so you can check them out but yeah i really like how the bar suits the bike it's got that v crossbar as well which is old bmx style overall really like the way the bike came together i did throw some stickers on it as well I think the placement on the inside of the lefty fork looks pretty cool, but it's just me. Really happy with the bike. Commuting on it is so fun. Ah, look at it. So much better with the gearing and stuff. Thanks for checking the video out. I hope you enjoyed it. Next one is going to be either a clunker or we've also got a cycle truck coming up, which is like a custom thing by a friend. But yeah, thanks. See you soon. Bye.